This house believes that prison should be abolished. Hello, I'm Rachel and I'm very excited to participate in Binghamton University's third annual online debate tournament. I'd quickly like to thank both my opponent and the judge for taking the time to participate as well. Now, without further ado, I will establish the criteria regarding what the resolution I previously stated entails, or more specifically, what is meant by the word prison. Prisons are defined as any federal or state-run institution for confinement of persons convicted of serious crimes and therefore should rule out privatized facilities, including jails, halfway houses, factory farms, and other structures of confinement that are either not state or federally run or not subject to humans at all. I propose that we should abolish prisons because of the harms associated with wrongful convictions and prison violence, along with the economic harms that result from the operation of such facilities. According to the Innocence Project, there have been 329 post-conviction DNA exonerations in the U.S. since 1989. Putting the aspect of DNA testing aside, more than 2,000 people have been exonerated of serious crimes within the same time frame. This number does not even take into account the 10,000 people who are wrongfully convicted but not exonerated each year. This means that a guaranteed 2,000 people serve prison time that should not have. And in the grand scheme of things, 2,000 people may not seem like a lot. However, when you take into account individual stories, of the people affected, these people seem to have a greater number and weighs a lot heavier. A study done by the University of Chicago Press on understanding the effects of wrongful imprisonment indicates that the forms of suffering and damage experienced by these men and their families were numerous. The life courses of those involved were permanently changed, and the men suffered losses of relationships, prospects, and years of their expected life history, and admitted that sometimes they wished they were back inside. In addition to the high rates of wrongful conviction associated with the status quo of prisons, I could also provide you with the high number of prisoners who are brutally beaten and raped each day within prison facilities. However, the weight of one man's personal story says a lot more about this individual issue than all the statistics on the internet could combined. An inmate at the East Mississippi Correctional Facility sent a letter to the American Civil Liberties Union in which the inmate speaks of his rape by a gang member and says, I was held hostage in a cell threatened with knives and tormented from 11.30 p.m. until 3.30 a.m. He later admits that, If I had one wish, I wish that I would never violated the law and shoplifting, which is what got me in prison. Regardless of the crime that put this inmate in prison, no human deserves to be denied of their rights and dignity and self-respect, nor should they be dehumanized through the denial of their civil liberties. Of course, prison should be abolished, as these facilities allow for moral atrocities such as wrongful conviction and inmate violence, both of which are a violation of individual freedom, but moral considerations aside, prisons should be abolished because of the harms they induce on the economy. According to the United States courts, it costs $28,284 to keep someone in prison for one full year. Not to mention, the U.S. has the highest incarceration rate. Imprisonment also displaces the opportunity for the inmate to make or spend money in his or her community. Thus, economic growth is hindered in the long run as well. I propose that this house should abolish prisons and instead implement alternative forms of punishment for unjust crimes such as worker reform programs or community service programs. Eliminating prisons won't solve social injustice, but it will take a stab at one of the largest problems, that being the incarceration of innocent people based on the color of their skin or economic status, and the injustices faced by both the guilty and innocent persons held in these prisons. By implementing the previously stated means of punishment post-trial, those who commit crimes will be given punishment in the form of community service, as it should go in accordance with the crime they committed it should be noted that despite the lack of prison sentence, a pro probation period following the crime should still exist, in which violation of terms of prison should result in further punishment. Investing the money saved on prisons into education and work programs will only better the individuals and decrease crime rates that come about as a result of the prison system. This being said, you should vote in favor of the pros proposition to abolish prisons.